What's up, Julian? Good to have you here. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. It's been uh, quite a while that we uh, spoke, actually. I think it's been like two years ago. I think it's it was two years ago at a revealed party. Um, maybe it was in Ibiza, Ushraya, yeah. when you played back-to-back -back with Kill the Buzz. Yeah, it could be. It's actually, yeah, it's uh, quite a while That's ago. That's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. And I, I, I saw you at ADE this year. Uh, yeah, what did you do there? So... Uh, I arrived on uh, Thursday at Eddy. Uh, I went to some uh, parties to, uh, you know, you know how it goes to have some uh, networking and drinking with some friends. And uh, uh, Saturday I had the revealed conference the whole day. I gave some uh, seminars about making melodies and uh, some demo sessions. Cool. And later I had uh, the revealed show. So uh, I played at the second room. Uh, I played some new stuff. And uh, I played some old stuff, some throwbacks. That was really cool, actually. Yeah. Okay, nice, man. And yeah, since it's been quite a while that we spoke, I obviously missed a lot from your career. Uh, of course, I had a look at your social media and saw what you've been doing, but I wanted to hear it from your side, of course. Um, the last thing I heard from you was that you released your album, and that's been like two years ago, I guess. Yeah, um, my album uh, Evolve. Yeah, Evolve, yeah. And I was wondering what was your reason to release an album and not like 10 separate singles at that time? To, to be quite honest, I haven't had uh, a, like a big plan to release an album. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was so that I had a lot of tracks, uh, a lot of tracks ready. And uh, before my album, I released uh, the first EP, uh, my first EP on Revealed. It was the Typhoon Storm EP. Yeah. And that was that was like uh, I think it was my big break, mm -hmm. and uh, after that uh, I had so many uh, so many demos, and not only uh, the amount of it but also the type of tracks they were very experimental, but still like my own sound and they told a kind of a story. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I had like tw twenty tracks, and the only thing that was very uh, would be very cool to do with it was like one big album with all the tracks okay so, so uh, not, not, not just a really big plan behind no it, just uh yeah throwing down all your your projects yeah we, we, had, we had like a few meetings with revealed and uh, at first we wanted to to do a big ep mm -hmm. so uh, actually yeah the same as typhoon but then with more tracks maybe four or uh, five tracks mm -hmm. but i kept sending demos uh, in the same style, it was like a period when I had very a lot of inspiration, mm -hmm. and yeah. So um, after some meetings, uh, the revealed guys uh, proposed to me to make an album, yeah. and uh, I, I was obviously uh, very excited. And uh, Hardwell as well uh, wanted to release all the tracks, so yeah, it was a big honor for me. Yeah, and I can imagine. Yeah, but it wasn't really planned uh, long before releasing the album. It was just uh, a cir a circumstances. Okay, yeah. nice. And after the, after releasing that album, um, did you notice any differences? And did you notice that something big was happening in your career, or a lot of gig requests, or remix requests, or those kind of things? Well. The, the the one thing that really stood out to me was like uh, I gained a, a really a hardcore following like a really um, dedicated fans after the album uh, and that was uh, the biggest thing mm -hmm. and also I created like uh, an expectation pattern for for other people that listen to my music that I make a lot of different kind of styles mm -hmm. and that w that is a thing that I um, went on to do after the album just releasing different kind of styles and people uh, uh, just expect that from me from then on okay but but like gig wise and and um, request wise it, it wasn't it was I think typhoon storm EP was more impactful than the whole album okay. <laughs> actually yeah to be to, to be quite honest but for why, me, why it was just. Think, why do you think that happened? Was it the music? Was it the moment? Was it uh, because I um, imagine if you release an album, you you have to spread the attention over like twenty tracks instead of just one. Yeah, yeah, and that was the thing. Um, the album also contained uh, Typhoon, mm -hmm. 
and sell those rare singles that were, were released before already. Uh, and um, so the album had like uh, four or five maybe big singles. So you have Typhoon, Cell, uh, um, and Evolve, and some other tracks. Mm-hmm. But the rest was like very album uh, focused. So they were these tracks weren't very single. Um, uh, single material. Single material, yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, when Typhoon Storm um, came out, that was like, uh, how do you call it? So, some underground hit. It became an underground hit and had a lot of support by radio and, and, and even Pete Tong. Mm-hmm. And um, but with the album, it wasn't really the focus to do to recreate that. It was more like the focus to create me as an artist than to create a big single and to hype it for yeah. a long time. So, so uh, uh, career or business-wise, maybe it wasn't the the best uh, uh, thing to do. Mm-hmm. But as an artist, for me, it was very cool. And and it was two years ago. I didn't had like very uh, much experience as a uh, how do you call it a, a career guy or a business guy, yeah. you know? And how old, so, you, how old yeah. are you right now? I'm 24 right now. 24. Okay, so you were 22, maybe 21, even when you released an album. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah. Ab- after releasing the album, uh, you already told me a little bit, but I, yeah, I wanted to get the full story on on podcast. Um, you told me already that you were getting in some kind of creative, um, yeah, road trip, as in you were finding yourself on on new levels and yeah, new things. Yeah. So I think. Um, after the album, I released um, three singles, I think. Power, Revive, and and another track I, d- I don't remember em- anymore. Mm-hmm. But uh, it wasn't a lot of singles, and I-, I could have made more tracks in the same style, but for me, it didn't quite uh, excite me as much th- as it did before. To so I that kind, st- a kind of music, that style. Yeah, music. yeah. And I heard, like, there are a lot of people who still want to hear the Typhoon or Evolve or Cell sound. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was, I'm I'm really not behind it to recreate that feeling uh, anymore with other tracks. And that was also the reason why my album is called Evolve, because I want to keep evolving forever when I make music. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. So you decided to do, to do something else and to switch styles or... Yeah, so I um, I had a, like like a, a quiet moment for a while, for a few few months, mm-hmm. and uh, I just tried to make everything that I wanted to make in the studio, but not releasing it yet because I I thought like yeah it has to be some uh, level of quality to show to the people, mm-hmm. and um, after a while I, I very uh, I fell in love with like trap and future based stuff mm-hmm. um, but then I thought okay um, I want I want to make this but I want to give my own twist so I want to to give it some progressive house kind of melodies or chord structures okay. and the uh, funny thing is actually uh, when I started making music I uh, made hip-hop for that w- hip-hop was the first genre that I'm that I made, oh, like wow. uh, B- because you just really liked it, or you were into yeah, the hip hop thing. I've always been a hip hop fan, you know, and that's how I kind of uh, rolled into the whole production thing. So I made hip hop beats, but I needed rappers and I needed vocalists for it, but I couldn't have it, and I couldn't really work with it or something. I, w- I wanted to have my own uh, little project. I wanted to have yeah. my own tracks without other people. Maybe it sounds very selfish, but no, I, <laughs> I needed that because too. that's. I think that's one of the biggest problems from uh, of producers right now. You know, like creating a track is it pretty easy. I, I mean, you can download software, plugins, uh, samples, everything online for free, even if you want to. But finding that perfect vocalist or finding that perfect rapper for your track is still pretty hard. Uh, and even if you found someone else, you have to invest money, and a lot of the starting yeah. artists don't have that kind of money. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I can definitely, I can definitely get it. it that's that's uh, definitely true. But now it works though. But but back then, eight, uh, nine years ago, it was very hard. And mm-hmm. especially with rappers, I didn't quite get the feeling that I wanted. Mm-hmm. So uh, um, yeah, nine years later, so right now, 
trap and future bass is like a very big thing and it's actually is it, it is hip hop but but then without the rappers and with like big progressive melodies and and chords so, that's so like for me it's your like thing completely actually it, it's like homecoming you know yeah exactly it's not that i, I didn't want to make progressive house uh, uh like four years ago but i rolled into it because i liked it at the moment mm -hmm. and now i like this new kind of style at the moment so yeah uh, back to uh, um, a year ago when I just started to make new kind of styles, um, me and my team came up with a project called Involve mm -hmm. uh, because we wanted to um, experiment, but then online, so uh, p so people can see what I'm making online and what I'm uh, trying to make uh, with new uh, drafts. Yeah, and how do you do that? Because I noticed that you are using fan uh, fan gates. Uh, for yeah. just the downloads and as, as far as I could see like the few last tracks that you released uh, were given away as free downloads right yes what's the, so, what's the reason why you uh, why you did that I think uh, it's interesting for people it, it's people will download it faster when it's free than when they need to pay for it yeah. and you have you have torrents you have like vk.com you have like you can download every MP3 that you want, so for me it doesn't really uh, give that extra thing to to make um, charge for it. And it's, and the music that I'm releasing now isn't like beatport orient orientated, so yeah. So why not give it give it away for free? It makes it a lot easier. Yeah, as well. And your music spreads further than when it's uh, when it's av available and charge for it actually. Yeah, and also it's also copyright free, so. Um, people on YouTube, uh, vloggers and stuff, they, they uh, can use it without any problems. And is that something you uh, promote as well? As in you, you write to those bloggers and to those vloggers as in, hey, you can use my music, it's for free, uh, to give your music an extra push or is it something you're just looking forward to do or have someone to do? Or <coughs> So, um, um, two years ago we only sent my music to DJs and radio stations as promo mm -hmm. but now promo also includes like uh, YouTube influencers and vloggers and also the big YouTube channels like Trap Nation and uh, uh, Proximity and Mr. Suicide Sheep are very very good yeah. uh, very good uh, outlets to promote your music for free actually yeah and, and do you use a company to, to write to those people like a PR company or is it something you do yourself I I have my my management does uh, the whole involve project for me. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that that's the only thing that I, they are focusing on right now for me. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest I'm doing by myself. Okay. But they are they are purely focusing on uh, involve. Okay. And that's nice. good. oh actually so that's and, very and can cool. Can we see involve as a label or is it more like a platform or? Yeah. So I never actually called it a label because it is. Um, a label for me is like a platform to also promote other artists and to have like uh, you know a big, big group of people yeah. a label for me is like a culture and uh, a group of people who are doing the same thing yeah. but uh, for Involve it's not yet at that level but it, I, I, I would call it like um, a release outlet for Julian Color tracks okay and so it's only for your own for your own music for your own purpose for now, for now. Ah, okay. So you're and just looking at how it's gonna run, and if it's gonna, if it's able to grow, you you're gonna make a label out of it. Or? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Man. Great. That's that's like my future vision for it. But I um, uh, involve is like everything that I want to do. I I have no boundaries. I have no A and Rs. I'm yeah. I'm only A and R. So that can be a good or a bad thing, of course, because <laughs> you have to need you need some quality control. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I can do whatever I want on a label, but that doesn't doesn't mean that I'm not releasing on other labels. Okay, and regarding the label story, like something that is really going on right now uh, that I hear a lot about is: Do you still believe in labels? As in, do you still think you need labels? Um. It depends on on what you want to do with your music, mm -hmm. because if you um, only want your music to be on Spotify and to have some chance to to get in playlists or uh, 
to have some chance to to get in the big uh, you on the big YouTube channels, mm -hmm. then I, I would say labels are not necessary because you can do it with your own network mm -hmm. or with a manager. But if you want to have like a family or different families here and there, you know, um, then a label is quite essential. Yeah, I always see when it comes down to your network actually, because you have a network yourself. Because yeah, you've been an artist for quite a while. You've played around all around the world. You've met people. People n learn to know you through your music on Spotify and stuff. So you always, you also uh, or already have the the leverage. Oh, lights turning on. <laughs> uh, you're already ha having the leverage. Um, yeah, to to show people your music. But starting artists, they don't really have that kind of network or platform to do it. So I, th I, I, I really believe that labels are going to get hit pretty hard in the future, um, except especially the smaller ones, actually. So I, I really yeah. think it's a smart idea for you to start this platform for yourself and just see where it's heading before you even start a label. Yeah, yeah. I haven't uh, used the word label for a year for this project, you know. it's I call it project or I call it like a release outlet. Yeah. And yeah, it, it for some people it looks like a label mm -hmm. um, because it has a logo and it has a name. But for me it's just just a way to, to, to release my music. I, I have the logo and the name for it because maybe in the future when it really takes off, then it's then you have it already. Yeah, smart move, man. And yeah, um, regarding the music, like you said, you you changed styles within last year because yeah, like you said, you were coming home because the sound that is really trending right now is the thing you would like to do uh, the most. Um, yeah. So is that also the reason why you started with your side project with Yuka? Um. Yeah. Well, what I did with Yuka, um, the the main thing was. Um, I was releasing like ambient stuff mm -hmm. and very experimental tracks. So um, yeah, you can look it up on Spotify. My track "Rain" or my track "Desperation." Those tracks are very ambient, um, movie score kind of tracks mm -hmm. and very experimental. And <laughs> what I what I saw was they they get uh, they had the most streams on Spotify. So they are now over like. Uh, 1.3 million streams on on each nice. of the, the the ambient tracks, and that's a very good thing. Yeah. But it's not what I represent when I play out live, yeah. and that can be a, like a tricky thing for you know for for fans or uh, promoters or bookers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to separate those two kind of world worlds. Now, are you all also and performing at Juka or just releasing music? No, Juka is just uh, uh, for releasing. Cool. Yeah, and I have some ideas for in the future maybe for Juka. Um, um, maybe I want to like in the in the very uh, not the near future but in the far future I want to to make like maybe a like little documentary and then I make uh, my own music with the Juka uh, uh, sound as a soundtrack or something. Maybe right. that's a, that's a future plan. I, I think that that sound is really working well on Spotify because Spotify is like a listening platform. Uh, yeah, and people are more tend to listen to easy music than all the hardcore EDM uh, stuff. That's yes, very um, true. So yeah, I also I al also noticed that those kind of genres work really well on Spotify. So smart move as well. Um, let me see. Like Involve, I really get it. It's it's a great platform. I understand Juka. What what's your future plan right now? Because uh, you're still playing as Julian Kalor, right? Yeah. So I want, want to really uh, really uh, build on that on Julian Um I want to uh, uh, I just signed with a new uh, bookings agency, uh, Run the Trap. So I'm gonna do bookings within that genre. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I have some cool uh, cool new releases coming up. An EP on a label. I can't tell you which one right now, but it will be announced very soon. So and uh, some other releases. And yeah, Julian Color is will be like more energetic kind of stuff, the more stuff that you would hear on, on clubs or festivals. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to make Juka a little bit bigger by releasing more stuff on, on, uh, yeah, on Evolve for Juka. Yeah, cool. Well, yeah, like really smart move. And do you also um, put out content for Juka on your own page or is it something uh, you, yeah, you don't do anything on? Yeah, actually Juka is just, for now it's just music. 
no Facebook page, no Instagram page. No, oh, no Facebook, no Instagram, and Juka, and it's no secret that Juka is me, obviously, mm-hmm. and it has like it is my name, Julian Clore Juka. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's not a secret; it's just a part of the world that I'm trying to make. Mm-hmm. But like, it was very convenient to have like a separate name for it, yeah. um, just because of the I. I want Julian Color to to be seen as like more energetic uh, music yeah, guy. The more yeah. the more dance floor minded uh, DJ. Yeah, more dance floor, maybe maybe radio later, but yeah. Okay, Who nice. Knows? And when it comes down to starting artists, like you, you obviously have like different plans than the normal artist does. You know, like searching for a label, release it through the label, all those different uh, like standard kind of plans. You you just create your own platform and release your music. Are there any tips you could uh, tell like someone who's just getting started or anything you experienced yourself in the last few years which you think is yeah and handy to know yeah I think my tips would be very like they they've uh, they've uh, already been said mm-hmm. uh, but I think it's one of the most important things is to really find out what what you really like to do yeah so like, really find you, your inner self actually yeah 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 exactly uh, like that like if you if you don't li- uh, like to play but still like to expose your music to crowds maybe you could think about doing live shows and less shows mm-hmm. or if you really like to dj but production is not really your thing maybe it's cool to to uh, go more into the dj direction and make club tracks and stuff yeah, it's, yeah I, I see a lot of artists or a lot of art i see some artists that are struggling with what they want to be and I think it's of course a good thing, but you need to uh, think about it at, from the beginning. Yeah, I, t- I can totally agree with that because I, yeah, I, 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 I changed myself as well uh, to be part of yeah. the EDM country, which I don't really fit it in. Uh, but it was an easy step for me to make, so I'm, I, I'm really uh, relating to that. Big respect because I really liked the show and uh, it was a great story that you told. Yeah, yeah. thanks, man. <laughs> it means a lot. Um, yeah. What I was wondering, like you, you noticed that finding yourself is really important. How long did it took you to find yourself? Yeah. So what I said before, um, I, maybe it took maybe three years. Okay. And I, I'm still finding. I'm still. Uh, I'm never stop. I will never stop with searching. I think. No, because I think that's part. It's all part of the. All part of the journey. Yeah, me. because you will Not, ev- evolve as a person, and your artist name will evolve as well. Yeah. of course. Yeah. But the moment that you accept it, that you are constantly changing, then that's the moment when you are doing something good. I think the moment when you can accept that you are changing and want to be something different, or if you want to be something that you was two years ago, mm-hmm. that's the moment when you get stressed and don't want to work anymore. You know what, what I mean? Awesome. Yeah, I, and like I said, I, t- I can totally relate to it, man. I think this is a great uh, quote to end with. Yeah. Uh, because, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's like, uh, how, do you, how do you say it in, in English? On, in Dutch, it's like hitting, hitting the nail on the, with a hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what it is in English. Uh, but yeah, let's just, uh, let's just end with that beautiful quote. Thank you for your story. Uh, and thank you for your, uh, yeah, for, for telling us your plans and how you work right now. It's inspiring. And um, yeah, w- I'm looking forward to new music from your side. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. It was a good talk. No problem, man. Thanks again. <laughs>